Hi, I am Connie, and today I'm going to be walking you through a lesson um, for STEM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And this is for Colorado Mesa University. I'm a student there. And the standard we'll be going over today is ETS1, um, that's in Engineering Design. The letter A, defining and delimiting an engineering problem, developing a possible solution, optimizing the designing process. Um, also, the second standard links among engineering, technology, science, and society, the influence of engineering technology on our natural world and our society as today. Um, our contents and objectives will be listed in that lesson plan, and they are basically to be understanding of problems and solutions and using all the different skills that they have and they'll learn to do that and they'll be designing their own. And I'm using Picture Perfect Science lessons. This is where I'm basing my lesson out of. We will also have some other supplies and materials needed and that will be um, listed in that lesson plan. So the first one we'll start off with Engage. And this will get the students excited about learning. We are going to show some people pictures or if you have some actual cash currency of the United States to the kids and we'll ask, do you know the picture do you know who these pictures are on our money? Why do you think their pictures are printed on our money? And why do you think they had deserved the honor to have your picture printed on money? So that'll kind of get them engaged. We'll talk about five dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, all the different kinds and um, what their knowledge is of that. That's part of the pre-assessment process. And then I will be reading a lot of book. Um, it's called Now and Ben. And we'll talk about why Ben Franklin deserved his portrait on the $100 bills. And um, while I'm reading or after I'm reading, I'll ask, why do you think Ben Franklin earned a place on that $100 bill? And which one of Ben Franklin's um, inventions or accomplishments impressed you the most? And then I'll show another a video from Brain Pop. I love that website. It's got great videos that kids love to watch. They get hooked by it. They want to watch more of this little robot that talks to them and tell them about the things. And they've got little quizzes that you can use to see who was listening, that kind of thing. So we're going to start now moving on to Explore. And we're going to talk about Ben Franklin's inventions. So I'm going to tell the students that we would really like to focus on some of the inventions of Ben Franklin. Um, this is also going to be used, our science interactive notebook that I would give them vocabulary and the definitions and pictures we'd be drawing in that notebook. Um, we'll talk about what an invention is, what's the difference between an invention and a discovery, um, and then maybe what, dis what discoveries did Ben Franklin make. And then we'll show actual pictures or items, if you have them, of what he invented. And for each invention, we'll discuss the problem that was involved with researching how to figure out the problem and resolve it and the solution for it, which is relating back to our content objective um, and our standards. And then maybe we'll talk with turn and talk with our partners throughout different stages of this lesson and this one would be maybe to talk about if you've ever invented anything, what were some of the problems you encountered. Um, next, we'll talk to students and tell them that we have some problems that we would like them to solve and they'll have teams and we'll give them a handout cards. And those cards and all of those again supplies are listed in this text. So each team would get a card and then they would have to figure out what the problem was, what's the, what would be a possible solution. And towards the end of this, we would be you know, using our science notebooks, like I said, and doing some RDW, which is read, draw, and write. And that's just one strategy that they know of how to explore and learn more. Then, let's see, we would move on to choosing an idea. The group would choose an idea, and they would get to design that idea on a blank sheet of paper or big poster board, um, the criteria for success would be listed that they'd have to have a title on the poster, which would be the name of the invention. All the parts are labeled and all the materials are listed. So they would know where they need or what they need to be successful for that project. Um, then at the end of that, something might be to have parents come in or other classes come in 
and they could do a little grading as well. We could create a rubric and they could um, observe, listen to the students talk and explain and then give them feedback. Um, and that kind of shows, gets parents involved, get the community involved. And then we will read about, oh, explain. And we'll read the book, build it aloud. And we're going to talk about it. Again, this is a nonfiction text. And so all of these things are integrating all of our subject matters and areas. And um, this book will talk about that it provides solutions to eight of the problems that they worked on that they were solving earlier. And we'll read the author section because those always on the last page have some fun tidbits. And this author actually is a civil engineer who loves to think and figure out how things work. So it kind of relates to the real world students why we're doing this. And we can ask questions, what do engineers do? Do you know anyone that is an engineer? What kind? Um, and an extension maybe would be to invite a civil engineer from the town to come on in and um, give a presentation. Throughout the book we'll read through and they have actually steps. So we could go through each step. One is the problem. Step two is the principle. Step three is an idea. Step four is to plan. Step five is to create. Step six is to improve. So we would go through all of those steps while we're reading the book and talk about the solutions and the problems and um, how did they relate to what the students were doing. Then um, we'll go through, let's see, listen, compare, yep, read edition. The next stage would be elaborate. And this is where we would be designing solutions. So the students get some hands-on activity again. Um, making sure to include everybody, engage all the learners at different stages. So the students and the teachers can all work on a solution together, which would be time effective and cost effective. Um, if you have the ability or time to be able to do this at home project and at school, then that would be great as well because they can extend further, but it would definitely take a lot more time. And the classroom that I'm in would benefit from doing one altogether because our, we have very limited resources. Um, so. We would do an activity, brainstorming problems together and deciding on the problem and what one that all the students can relate to. And then we would have a learning target, like I can apply the what I learned about designing solutions to problems by inventing a solution or a problem myself. And then we would go through that brainstorming process, figure out the problem, encourage students to think about the tasks that they encounter on a regular basis at home or at school, and we would go through all those steps, the problem, the principle, the ideas, the plan, um, the same ones that we went through, create, improve, and explaining um, you know, that all of our inventions are part of a process, and even once they're done, we always are looking for ways to improve it so that more people, would, consumers would want to purchase them. Um, and then we will go into evaluate. And this is where we would use some student worksheets. It's called the pitch. And we'll talk to students and tell them about um, once you've in invented something and you've created, all, you've been through all those steps, then you're going to pitch it to somebody to try and get them to buy it. And another good um, thing that they had in the lesson was to watch, they have a show called ABC Shark. Um, tank and that shows entrepreneurs trying to sell their product to people that would want to invest in it and so this would be a great thing to include so that students are again excited and engaged and um, they see an actual process because that's what they're going to be doing for their final assessment their post assessment summer to, to get to see where they are at and if they understood the lessons um, so and they also have a scoring rubric for that and um, we're going to tell the students that we would like them to pitch their idea to us and maybe a good thing would be is to call in some different staff members or again get some of those civil engineers or people through the community that could come and they can listen to it or maybe have the students do a video if you have that capability to where they're doing like a commercial and most all of the kids I know in our class have watch commercials and they love to talk about them during class. It's kind of interesting. So this would be a great way to have them participate and do their own little commercials. Um, and that would about sum up the lesson. Thank you for listening. And I've listed all of the things in 
my lesson plan differentiation strategies for cognitive different learning styles will be using visuals, LCD screens, um, the internet, the computer, paper, reading and writing and drawing. Um, we'll have all of those ideas taken care of. Another thing on the extension that we could do, we have a 4-H county agent in town and she is a great resource because for STEM, they actually have activities already put together and she will come into the classroom and teach the students and give them the opportunity to have hands-on instruction or um, hands-on activities related to that STEM project with all different types of things. So that would be a great resource to use because it's free. They come in and do it if you give them enough planning time ahead of time. Um, and again, like I said, getting a civil engineer, somebody from the town would be awesome to expand that process. Um, and then accommodations, you know, same thing. We would use additional time for students that needed, note taking, balance grouping, all of those things. And throughout, I've talked about my assessments. In the beginning, you're pre-assessing by seeing what the students know about the dyna um, <laughs> about STEM and U.S. currency. And then our formative would be our interactive science notebooks, our problem solving cards and groups, our um, posters with designs, our elaborate session where students and teachers work together to design a solution to a problem. And then finally, the post assessment would be the um, pitch stage where they would pitch their actual idea and uh, go through all those processes. So thank you for listening.